Shea, and welcome to Métis Alive. My name is Felice Gladue, and thank you for joining me. I am so excited to get you started on this traditional Métis art of capote making. A capote is a coat made from a wool blanket. They were made popular during the fur trading years, but have been worn here on this land we now call Canada for hundreds of years. Capotes were made popular by fur traders, voyageurs, buffalo hunters, interpreters, all of whom many were Métis. The capote, which is a blanket, transformed into a jacket. The capote was a popular coat during the fur trading days because it was light yet warm, and with the wraparound style, it was easy to move and hunt in. The pattern of a capote maximizes every part of the blanket. Blankets were also used for making breeches, leggings, dog blankets, even to be used as a door on a house. In the 1700s, about 60% of trade items were actually blankets. And in 1706, the Hudson Bay Company actually started to employ tailors to make capotes. In 1780, the iconic Hudson Bay blanket was born. These stripes are known worldwide as Hudson Bay. Indigo, yellow, red, and green. These colors were the most popular and easy colors to dye at that time. Another quality of the Hudson Bay blanket are the points. The points did not determine the value of the blanket, but instead determined the size of the blanket. They were added on so that when the blanket was folded, you could still see which size the blanket was without having to unfold it. This is a two-point blanket. It's uh, slightly smaller than a twin. This is the size that would have been quite popular during the fur trading days. The sizes were two, two and a half, up to four. The sizes were smaller back then because the beds were smaller and the people were smaller, so the capotes were smaller as well. Nowadays, we have three and a half point, which is a twin, four point, which is a double, six point, which is a queen, and eight points, which is a king size. The reason they're called points is after the French word empoitier. Empoitier means to make threaded stitches on cloth. The points are four inches in length and they were put on by the French weavers back in the fur trading days. In 1890, the Hudson Bay started putting labels on their blankets. This was to distinguish them from competitors like early Whitney. The labels have changed over the years. There are many different colors of wool blankets available. I have read that blue, like this capote, was the most popular amongst the Métis. And white, or this cream color, was a popular color amongst hunters because it provided camouflage in the snow. You will need a scarf, or more traditionally, a sash, to wrap around your capote to keep your jacket closed. The back of the capote, you will see two hood ties. These are decorative, but they are also very functional. When it got windy, you put on your hood, closed up your lapels, and then you pulled the hood ties around to the front and used them as a built-in scarf. Okay, let's get started in making your very own capote. Okay, let's get into the contents of your kit. You will have a how to make a capote instructional guide, as well as the body of your capote, and two pocket cutouts, 
Of course, the pockets are optional. Two sleeves, a hood, a strip for your neck fringes, two strips for your arm fringes, and two long strips that will become your hood ties. You will also have yarn, some clothes pins, and some extra large needles. If you purchased the add-on of the sash, the sash will also be in your kit. What is also needed for this project but not included in your kit are the scissors. You need at least one good pair of fabric cutting scissors. These will be used to cut the yarn as well as to make your fringes. What's also nice to have is just a small pair of snips. They're just easier to handle, smaller to get into those um, tight spaces. Also, something I like to use are pinking shears. Those are the scissors that have the serrated teeth. The pinking shears make your fringes look really great. They just give an added touch to your fringes. I like to start with the sleeves. Your kit will come with two sleeves. Put one to the side now. One end of the sleeve will be wide and curved. This end will eventually attach to the body of your capote. The other end is narrow and straight. This will become your cuff, where your hand will poke out. When starting a section of the capote, I like to measure my yarn so that I have enough yarn to finish that section without having to tie a knot and get a new piece of yarn. This will make your stitching look cleaner as you will not have as many random knots poking out. To measure the yarn for the sleeve, open up the sleeve. Trace with your yarn the cuff side and then up to the top. This will be your first length. You will need four of these lengths in total. So that's one. There's two. Three. And four. Now we're all human and make mistakes, so I usually add just a little extra for good measure. Now make sure that your capote sleeve is folded properly so that each point is touching and matching. Get your needle and your yarn. I find the easiest way to thread the yarn, even though these are quite large eyes, but it is to put the yarn in between my pointer and my thumb and squeeze it so that it's poking just a little bit out. And then I'm actually putting the needle onto the yarn rather than pushing the yarn through the needle. When you have it in between your pinky and your thumb, you're giving that yarn stability. And so it makes it easier. I push the needle down, kind of twisting it a little bit until I can see some of the fiber poking through. Then I pull it through. Now sometimes not all the fibers come through at the same time. So make sure that you're pulling them so that they're even. 
Okay. Now this yarn that you'll be using is quite thick, so I do not double it. But some yarn is thin and you want the yarn coloring to um, stand out on your capote. You want your stitching to stand out. So if you are using thinner yarn, then I would double it. But this one that came in your kit is thick enough for a single. I will tie a knot at the end, just a single knot, and I'll leave a good size tail. There's the knot right here, and this is the tail. Now we are ready to stitch the sleeve. At this point, you will want to make sure that your sleeve is folded and matched up. This is where the clothespins come in handy. Clip one on the end of the cuff and one in the middle. This way when you're stitching, your fabric will not move. I also like to make the tail that's attached to the needle a little bit longer. That way, the overall length of my yarn will be shorter and I won't have to make such big arm pulls. I start by going in between the two pieces of fabric along the edge that is wider and curved that will eventually be attached to the body of the capote. I like to have my needle depth about one centimeter. I use my thumb as a guide. So I'll put my thumb along the side of the fabric and then I'll push my needle so it comes up right beside my thumb and pull. Pull all the way until you get to the knot. The tail, we are going to hide. That's why I had you make the tail a little bit longer, about an inch to two, inch and a half to two inches. Keep the tail close to the edge of the sleeve. Now fold those two pieces of fabric together. And now we're going to go on the underside. Again, one centimeter down. This time I open up the two pieces of fabric so that I can see where that hole is so that I'm actually coming straight up through the same hole. Then I pull. Make sure the loop is on the top. Now you want it to be tight, but not cinched, okay? Now, we need to secure that loop. We're gonna eventually be stitching this direction. So to secure the loop, you're going to put your needle underneath the loop the opposite direction and pull. Sometimes your yarn might get a little bunched up. Just give it a little pull, little tug, and then keep pulling. Again, you want it to be tight, but not cinched. Now making sure that this tail is still near the top, we're gonna go in and make another stitch. I usually use my finger as a guide. I like my stitches to be about a finger width apart and consistently a finger width apart. But again, one centimeter deep. So you can use your thumb again as a guide and then put your needle down. When doing the blanket stitch, it's really important that you put your needle straight in, that the needle is straight up and down. Don't put your needle in at an angle. If you put your needle in at an angle, then 
the stitch length on each side is going to be different. So I'm putting it in at an angle. It's matching up here, but I'm putting it in at an angle. And we're gonna see what the other side looks like here. Whoops, didn't get that loop. There we go. You can see that it's much shorter on this side. This one is shorter, this one is shorter. These are the right length. Make sure you lift the yarn up and over the needle, making a loop. Can you see that loop? Pull the needle through the loop and keep pulling. Now, here again, not cinched, tight, but not cinched. You want the edge to be sitting straight and relaxed. So let's just loosen that up here. This is the blanket stitch that I'm teaching you. So again, one finger apart, or one centimeter apart. Line up with the other stitches and make sure that the tail is close to the edge so that it is sandwiched. Needle in, yarn up and over, making a loop and pull. Pull the needle up Pull the yarn tight, but not cinched. Now you can start to see the edging. Again, needle in. Eventually you'll be able to eyeball it. Yarn up and over. Pull the needle through the loop. Pull, pull. You can see that tail right along the edge, that's good. It's getting sandwiched in and camouflaged with the edging. So again, you wanna make sure your stitches are at least one centimeter deep. If not, your coat may come apart because remember, it's this blanket stitch that's keeping the coat together. So if the stitch starts here at about, you know, half a centimeter, the yarn can easily be pulled through these fibers and come apart. So it is important to stitch at least one centimeter deep. Now continue stitching all the way down to the cuff. Again, tight, but not cinched. All right, now let's check on our tail. It should be nice and tucked in. See, you can't even see it. You hardly even see the little knot. That just makes your stitching clean on the outside as well as on the inside. Once you get close to that clothespin, you can remove it. Needle in, yarn up and over, and pull. The yarn is quite long right now, so to avoid a lot of knotting up, you can pull it a little bit slower.
Now that you've gotten to this point, it's a good time to start thinking about rounding the corner and planning your stitches. Here's an example of a blanket stitch rounding the corner with the middle stitch being diagonal. You want your last stitch before the cuff to be about one finger length away. I often use the clothespin as a guide. So from here to here, how many stitches can I get in? Of course, I wanna to try to keep the width of the stitches the same. So I use my clothespin up here to just get a visual of how far my stitches are. I can see that there's a little bit on this side and a little bit on that side. So from the last stitch here, I put my clothespin with just a little bit of the wool showing. Another clothespin, again with a little bit of the wool showing in between where the stitch will be. And then it looks like I can get one more in there. And so I know that I can get one, two, three stitches in. Take these off. I'll leave the last one for reference. So again, three stitches, one finger width apart. We've got one, needle in, yarn up and over, and pull. That's one. Two. The last one is going to be our corner. And three. Now we're going to start to round the corner. I put my needle in the same hole of the last stitch. In, up and over, and then pull just a little bit to give yourself some leeway. Then on the underside, put your needle just near the top through both pieces of wool. We're gonna tack that wool or anchor it in place. This way it stays on the curve in the shape that you want. The second anchor, you go back through that hole on the underside, up through the front, and pull. The last part is to go back through this loop here, this edge, sorry, here. And we're doing this just so that the yarn is coming out the correct direction to go around the corner. Turn it to the side. Go back through that same hole, up and over, pull, and now you're ready to continue stitching down the cuff. Now remember that this is the part where your hand is coming through. So you don't want to stitch these two pieces of wool together. You're now going to be stitching just one at a time. So put your hand in there to separate the two and then continue to go one finger width apart, up and over. One finger width apart, up and over. Continue that all the way around. Mm -hmm. 
Now that you've stitched all the way around, I'm going to show you how to anchor and hide your knot. So I've done my last stitch here. Now instead of going back in, what I usually do is just go underneath, underneath this stitch here. I go underneath and pull. Then I go underneath one more time, and this is just gonna anchor the yarn in place. Then I will do one more under, but this time I will knot it. So I'll go through the loop and knot it. Pull that knot so it's nice and small. And then to hide the tail, I'll slip my needle in between the two pieces of wool Slip it through maybe one, two, three stitches up and then push it up through. Okay, I'm going to show you that again. I put it in between the two pieces of fabric. One, two, three. Push it up three stitches up through the middle. I put the end of the needle on the table and I push the fabric down as far as I can. Then I pull. Sometimes it's really tough to get that out. So I will use a pair of needle nose pliers and just pull that needle through. I'm still pushing down on the fabric and pulling up on the yarn. I'm cinching it really good. Then I take my snips and I just snip the end of the yarn and then I pull and straighten out the fabric. Now the tail is completely hidden even on the inside. It is tucked up in between these two pieces of wool here. Now we are ready to stitch the body of the capote. Lay your capote out flat like this. Some capotes will have a tag. Many people like to display their tags, especially if they're a Hudson Bay or a trapper's tag on the outside of their capote. Others like to keep it hidden on the inside. Now is the time for you to decide whether you want it on the outside or the inside. I'm going to put mine on the inside so I have it face up. If you're going to put it on the outside, then have the tag face down. You want to fold your capote over so that the armholes are matching. We are going to stitch from here to here. Again, use your clothespin to anchor your cloth together. Now, let's measure how much yarn we'll need for this section. Remember, four lengths are usually suffice. That's two, that's three, that's four. Again, just a little extra for good measure. Once you have finished stitching both shoulders, you'll be able to attach the sleeve. This is also the time you have to decide whether or not you want fringes on your shoulders. Let's start by measuring the yarn. 
you're going to stitch up here to the top and back down again. So let's measure that. Up to the top and back down again. That's one length. That's two, three, and four. It's a little bit extra. Now your sleeve has stitching on the bottom. The stitching on the bottom will match up with the armpit. So it's stitching on the bottom matched up to the armpit. You'll take the sleeve and turn it inside out. This seam here will be on the bottom. Open up your capote and slip the sleeve in. Find the middle of your armpit and pinch. Find the middle of your seam and match those two together. Use your clothespin to anchor the two pieces of wool together. Straighten out the fabric, matching it from side to side, edge to edge there. Now, take the two strips that are the exact same size. These will be your shoulder fringes. Put one to the side and then fold the other one. Make sure that you've pulled both pieces of fabric tight so you know where the top is. Pick up the fringe and place the folded section at the top. Tuck it in. Put your finger in between that folded piece of fringe and attach it with a clothespin. Now you can match all three pieces of wool and attach it in the middle with a clothespin and then down the other side as well. Matching all three layers. Tuck this one in a little bit more here. There we go. Now you're ready to stitch. We're going to start stitching from the armpit. This way, everything will be lined up. Now, just note that your stitching that you see is actually on the outside. So when we start, we want to hide that tail. So I'm going to remove the clothespin. I'm going to go in between the two pieces of fabric not in the middle where the stitching is. You want to anchor it to an actual piece of fabric. So about one centimeter deep, a thumb width deep, and pull. We're going to tuck in that tail, making sure our three pieces of fabric are together. Right now I'm just going through the two, two white pieces. I look inside, find that hole, I go up the same hole and pull. I'm going to be stitching this direction, so I'm going to put my needle in and under the opposite direction for the anchor. Oh. Now I'm ready to stitch. 
making sure my tail is near the edge and I'm holding on to all three layers. This stitch, I will actually go into all three layers, including the red fringe and pull. Now we're ready to do a corner stitch over this corner of the sleeve seam. I find when you do a corner stitch, it really softens the corner. Otherwise it sticks straight up, which is just annoying to me anyways. All right, I'm gonna take that clothespin out and just put my finger in there. I wanna go in to the same hole as the last stitch of the shoulder seam. Let's go in through that hole and straight out, up and over. And now I'm just gonna flip the seam over and go into this hole, the last stitch of the shoulder seam there. Go in that hole, up and over, and pull. Whoops, there we go. All right, so that get, continues the edging along this way. But now, you see how we've got this corner that sticks out? I find that quite annoying myself. So, we wanna get a diagonal stitch going in there to make the corner. So I'm going to go back to the first hole, stick my needle through that hole and straight out the back. Okay, so in through that hole and straight out the back. Up and over with the yarn. This is going to make the diagonal. Now you want to fill in the top seam here. So I'm just gonna go underneath this loop of the shoulder seam and pull. And then basically I'm just anchoring it until I get down to here, because this is where I wanna start going around again. So I'm just going to go in underneath this seam and then I'm going to go underneath this seam here. But remember when we anchor, if I'm going to go this way, then I want to put my needle in the opposite way. That will anchor your yarn so that you're ready to start stitching this way. Three, this should be the last one with the fringe. And then a stitch with just two pieces of wool. And then the very last stitch. All right, now, again, we wanna fill up this gap here. So what I do is go underneath that stitch there and pull. Then I'll go underneath again to anchor. And one more time to tie the knot. Go through the loop, make your knot. Then I'm slipping my needle. You can slip it in between the fringe and the wool or just through the two wool pieces. I'm going through the two wool, two white wool. 
push down, pull up with your pliers while pushing down, get that snip, straighten it out, and voila, it is covered. Now you're gonna pull that sleeve out and see what we've got. There you go. You can see you've got the fringe on this side and the fringe on this side. Now you can actually make the fringe. So you can just use your um, fabric scissors to make the fringe. Or if you have a pair of these pinking shears, okay, where it has the teeth, you see the teeth there? You can use those. So I'm gonna stand up. And I usually start by making a strip about one centimeter wide. And I don't go all the way up to the stitching here. I give about, again, another one centimeter before I get to the stitching. So one centimeter wide and then I stop about one centimeter before the stitches here. I keep doing that until I've done it all the way around both sides and then I'll come back and half these ones. Just find this allows the fringes to be more even by doing it this way. I like a skinnier fringe, but if you want a thicker fringe, then go ahead and just leave it like that. Let's talk about the neck fringe and the hood. This piece here is the neck fringe. Of course, this is optional. This piece here, the triangular piece, this is the hood. So fold the hood in half. So that it looks like this. This part here will be the top of your head. This point here is where the hood ties will come out. This part here is the back of your head. And this part from here to here will be attached to your capote. And then you'll notice it goes straight and then it should jet out just a little bit. That is leeway for the cuff, the cuff of the hood. Let's start with the cuff of the hood. So I find the indent, I put my finger there and I just fold it over, matching the two edges and then put my clothespin there. Same thing with this. Find the indent, put my finger there, fold it over so that it's matching on the edge and then put a clothespin. Now, just fold it flat, smooth it out like that. Put a clothespin in the middle, the side, the side. All right. I like to decorate my cuff. This time I'm using the X stitch. I measured out four lengths of yarn threaded my needle and tied a small knot with a small tail. Then I put the clothespins on as guides, one in the middle 
one in the middle of this section, one in the middle of this section. Then, starting under the cuff, I went in with my needle just through the fabric of the cuff, not the cuff and the hood. This way, your stitches are hidden and you won't see the stitches on the inside of the hood. They'll be tucked underneath the cuff. I plan to do four X's, one, two, three, four. Now, these X's are purely decorative. They are not an anchoring stitch. You can decorate your cuff any way you'd like. Sometimes I put fringes. I'll just cut fringes. Sometimes I will put a blanket stitch up there or another decorative edging stitch. What I'm going to do to secure the cuff to the hood is use a running stitch going through both layers of fabric. Just an in and out, in and out. Now that you've finished decorating the cuff, we can start to stitch the hood together. So take off these clothespins here, fold your hood in half, matching your corners, reattaching the clothespins, Now, we are going to just stitch the long edge here from the tip of the hood to the base of the neck. Now, I'm just about finished stitching this long side of the hood. Now, when you come to the end here, just anchor it as we have been. Loop. And then another loop and one more for the knot. But you don't have to worry about hiding the knot here because we're going to be folding this piece over anyways. So it just saves you time. Okay, I hope you're getting excited because your capote is really starting to take shape now. Let's talk about the body. So let's open up the capote here. This back part is the back of the neck. This flap here, you'll see it has like a stair cutout on it. From here to here is where you'll attach the hood. And from here to here is actually the lapel which will be folded back like that when you wear the capote. So it sits like this. Again, here to here you attach, and then that's the lapel that will be folded. Okay, let's attach this hood. So let's find the middle section of the back of the neck. Match seam to seam. Pull it down, pinch it, and then slip your clothespin in there. That's the center. Let's pull this down a bit. Now we're going to get the hood. The hood on the table like this, as if it was already attached. Then you're going to flip it over like this. You're gonna match up the seam to the middle clothespin. Now, if you want the fringe, this is where you need to attach it. So you're going to attach it underneath, 
fold it in half, find the middle point, open it up on the middle point there, and then secure all three together. Then move down to this first stitching, put a closed pin there, then matching up all three layers there, move down to this seam, put your closed pin in there. Right, then match up the cuff, the capote, and the fringe. Just move this clothes pin over. Then on this side, you've got the hood, you've got the capote, and you've got the fringe and attach those three layers together. So you've got the fringe, the back, the middle is the capote, and the top part is the hood. Now, you are going to stitch from one end all the way over to the other end. When you're stitching the cuff onto the capote and the fringe, just take note of this shoulder seam in here. Make sure that it's straight and not at an angle tucked up underneath the fringe because you don't want that part attached. So make sure that it's loose and you've only got the fringe, the capote, and the hood. You're going to stitch over the seam there, but make sure you're not stitching into the seam. You see how now I've got the fringe, the shoulder seam, the capote, and the hood. So just take note of that. Okay, now you've finished stitching the back of the neck. And on this capote, you can see that a little bit of the first stair there is uh, peeking out as well as on this one. So what I usually do on, in that case is just trim it up. Trim it there and then there. All it does is make your lapel bigger and uh, stand out. So this one, I'm also gonna have to trim some of the fringe because the fringe is also too long. So I'll start with just the body. And then I'll trim the fringe just a little bit too. All right, now you can go ahead and fringe these. Let's talk about the hood ties. I've gone ahead and stitched the hood ties using the blanket stitch, but I varied the length of the stitches just to give it a different look. I've got too long, too short, too long, too short. That's a nice thing with the blanket stitch. It's one stitch, but if you vary the lengths and the pattern that you combine the lengths of the stitches with, you can get completely different looking edge stitches. And it's kind of nice to have a variety of edging stitches on your project. The hood ties are a good place to get creative. This is a capote that my son made. 
he used a running stitch on the side of the hood ties. And at the bottom, instead of cutting it straight, he left a point. He also made this cute little applique man on his hood tie for added decoration. This is a capote that I made. I wanted to show you on the hood tie that I also used a running stitch, but here I forked the end of the hood tie as well as added into my hood a large tassel that comes out of the tip of the hood here. Also, I added some X stitching at the top, just for a little extra detail. This is a capote that my daughter was working on. She did some finger weaving and decided to attach the finger weaving to the hood ties, just to give it another decorative look. I'm going to show you how to attach the hood ties. So you're going to measure about two inches down and just start to tuck that point inside. You want to tuck it inside. You're going to get a nice straight line. And I like to square it up with the straight line of the cuff. Now you don't want to tuck in too much because then your hood will be much smaller. But two inches up to kind of the knuckles is, is how I measure your hood ties. You can lay them one on top of the other or what I usually like to do is kind of put them at a bit of an angle. That way when they lay on your back, they are angled and you can see both of them. So either is fine. Now take the edges, of course, we're using the edges that have these tails and your knots because we want to hide that. So take the edges, stick them in there as far down as you can. Okay, make sure that you still have that nice square on the top. Now we're going to use our clothes pin and pin the hood ties and the hood together. Get those pinned together like that. Then we're gently going to go inside, pull out the triangle gently, and just squeeze to feel the hood ties inside there. Make sure that they're up inside there. Now taking a piece of yarn about 15 inches in length, tying a knot with a short tail, I'm going to start to stitch on the inside here. Make sure you're going through all layers, the hood ties as well as the hood. And I'm just doing a straight stitch, just back and forth, back and forth, in and out, in and out. I'm pulling it quite tight because this is going to keep your hood ties secure. And we go from the inside so that again, we can hide the knots. I'm all about hiding those pesky knots and tails. Make sure you go all the way to the edge. Okay, one more. I think I can get on that edge there. See that better maybe that way. Then I'm going to just loop it around there so I get it on the side. Give it a good pull. And basically, you just want to do this maybe uh, three, four times. My stitches are small, about half a centimeter, because you want it to be a good anchoring stitch. Before cutting your yarn, 
Let's test the strength of your stitching. So open that up and just give your hood ties a good tug. Seems pretty good to me. I'm gonna take those off of there. Give them a nice tug. They seem quite secure in there. Yeah, it looks good on both sides. So then I'm gonna go back inside and just knot it off. Now we're ready to stitch the body of the capote. You're gonna start at the cuff here, go over and down the lapel, all the way around the bottom hem, and then back up the top and end at the opposite cuff. Now this section is quite a large section, so I don't measure out the yarn for the complete section. I do half at a time. From the cuff over to the lapel and down, down the bottom hem, open this up, and then just halfway. I make four lengths and then get started. I like to start my stitching here at the hood cuff so that I can hide my tail in between this stitching. I work in this direction to the bottom, then on the bottom hem, going to about the middle. That's about as long as my yarn will take me. Then I'll tie a knot there and again measure another piece of yarn and keep going. I stop here so that the knot is in the back, therefore it'll be less noticeable. Now because this yarn length is quite long, I'm gonna pull this other tail attached to the needle a little bit longer so that I don't have to pull so long to get one stitch. All right, I'm gonna go through the red and the cream here, push down, pull up with my pliers, and now I'm going to pull that yarn. I've got quite a bit, so I'm pulling it slowly so it doesn't get all tangled up. All right, smooth that out there. Cut the tail, and now I'm ready to stitch. I decided to match the stitching of the capote with the stitching on the hood ties. I did too short, too long, too short, too long. Just a note that the measuring of the yarn of four lengths per section is for stitching that is one centimeter deep. If you're going to start doing varied lengths of stitching, then you're going to need more yarn than just the four lengths. I've got about three inches left of yarn, so at this point I'm going to anchor and tie my knot. So just slip underneath once, twice, and then this last time, I'm gonna tie the knot. Now I'm just going to snip it with a little bit of a tail. I am gonna say about half a centimeter so that it has a little bit of yarn to stay attached to. So as I said, you'll have a little bit of a knot there because we don't have two pieces of fabric to sandwich that tail in to hide it, but it'll be at the back so it won't be very noticeable. So now measure the yarn for the remaining body of your capote and finish stitching. Now 
Now you finish stitching with the first length of yarn on the bottom hem about halfway. You're going to start the same place that you ended. So with a knot in your yarn, you're just going to come up through that underneath that knot and pull. Again, my yarn is very long at this point. So you're just pulling a little at a time, slowly. Oh boy, it's really long. There we go, there's the tail. So now I'm just gonna tie that knot twice, once, and twice. And I'm gonna snip it off, leaving about half a centimeter. And now I'm ready to keep stitching. So yes, you will have a big knot. It's kind of our only knot in our project that will actually show, but it'll be in the back and so it won't be noticeable at all. Now continue stitching up to the other cuff. This connecting knot here, we're going to call that our spirit knot. Beaters and quilters, they often leave one little mistake on purpose, maybe an odd colored bead or an odd colored stitch or type of stitch, just to say that, hey, I am not perfect. The only one perfect is creator. And so this is our only knot that's showing in this project. And so this is our knot of humility. It's the knot that humbles us to let us know that we are not and cannot be perfect. And so give yourself grace when you're making this capote because it is handmade and there will be some mistakes and there will be some imperfections, but that's okay. That's the beauty of handmade material art like these capotes. Everyone is unique and special. Tassels. Another popular way of decorating your capote, especially in the fur trade days, was to add a tassel. I've decided to add two tassels to each of the hood ties. There's one. This is a good time to gather up all those little scraps of yarn that you kept. They will come in handy for making the tassel. So this size of a tassel, um, I measured about three inches and then did 10 of those lengths. You want at least 10. Tassels are meant to be big and fluffy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, snip that off. Using one of the longest pieces of leftover yarn. I place it on the table and put the bunch of yarn right in the middle and start tying knots. One, and I flip it over, pulling really hard. Two, really tight, flip it over. I flip it over so that I'm not getting one big knot on one side. Three, that's three knots. And then I tie one more on the same side. This is going to be the yarn that you attach the tassel to the hood tie. Pulling on that 
tail there, pulling on the tassel, just smoothing out all of the yarn. I'm gonna pull it really tight, tight and smooth. And then I'm gonna put my paper clip, whoops, my clothespin right there. Now get one of the smaller pieces of scrap, put it on the table there and put your tassel on top of it. And now we're going to tie a couple knots in here. One, again, I'm flipping it over so that I'm not getting one giant knot on one side. Two, pulling really tight, flip it the last time and tie two knots here, the same side. I find that one of the tails will sit nicely and be camouflaged in the tassel, and the other one always wants to stick straight up, so I just trim that one off. Remove your clothespin. There's your tassel. Now you just need to trim it. So again, pull it, make sure all the pieces are straight down. Then near the end, just give it a snip. Okay. This one has a little straggler there. I'm just gonna snip that one there. And voila, there you go. Looks like a little octopus. Now I thread this piece of yarn here, just so that I can get it through this stitching here easily. There we go. And then I just tie it on here. I'm gonna tie it twice, two good knots there. And then I'm just gonna snip it off. I'm gonna leave, yeah, about a half a centimeter there. And there you go. You've got the two tassels on the end of your hood tie. Let's talk about the pockets. As you can see, I have a new capote here. This is a capote that my husband had made. When you put your pocket on your jacket, make sure you try your capote on and then mark off where you want your pocket to be. You wanna be able to put your hand in your pocket comfortably. You don't want it too high and you don't want it too low. So you're just gonna put the cutout of your pocket on your capote and then you're just gonna measure your yarn, and just as we have in the past, you're gonna start by hiding your tail in between the pocket and the capote. And then you're just gonna blanket stitch. It may seem like it's not gonna work because you're not on the edge, but it absolutely does. So have fun with your pocket. You could try, um, varying your stitch lengths. You could also do some decorating or even some embroidery on your pocket would look really nice as well. Or maybe even a stitched monogram. So have fun. You could also vary the shape of your pockets. On my son's capote, he decided to put the pocket in a point that would match his hood tie as well. He also flipped the top part of the pocket over to create a bit of a cuff there so that this edge was not raw and it was intact. And then he blanket stitched the folded cuff together there. Now, because this yarn length is quite long, I'm gonna pull this other tail attached to the needle 
a little bit longer so that I don't have to pull so long to get one stitch. Now when I said little snips, I'm talking about sizes like this that are left over, you know, about two inches. These can be helpful when making our tassels later on. The body and the hood ties are a good place to play around with different lengths because you're just going through one layer and these stitches are not attaching two pieces together. So on the sleeve, the stitching here is attaching the two pieces of wool together. And so you only want the stitching to be one centimeter in depth. If you have too long of stitching here, it's going to decrease the size of the sleeve. Often when you cut the fringes, you'll get little fibers from the fringe wool on the body of the capote, and it may discolor the body of the capote, especially when the capote is a light color. And so all you simply need to do is get a lint roller and just use it on that section, and it'll pull off all of the little fibers of red. Just a note that the measuring of the yarn of four lengths per section is for stitching that is one centimeter deep. If you're going to start doing varied lengths of stitching, then you're going to need more yarn than just the four lengths. The blanket I used for this capote had the original blanket stitching, the original binding on it, and it was still in really good shape. And so I decided to keep it, but still wanted to add the blue into the um, cuff so it would tie in with the rest of the capote. And so what I did was just did a over under stitch. So I counted four stitches and went over and then four stitches under, four stitches over, four stitches under, and just went all the way around. Therefore, utilizing the binding, but still tying in the cuff with the rest of the stitching on the capote. Let's start stitching from the inside. Using your thumb as a guide, Go a thumb width down, pull, tuck in that tail along the edge, wrap around to the other side, take a peek so you can find that hole, push your needle up through that hole and pull. I reposition my tail there. Now I'm gonna be stitching this direction. So I am going to put my needle underneath this first stitch in the opposite direction. This gets your thread ready to start stitching this way. So again, finger width apart, just checking to make sure that your tail is tucked up near the edge so that it'll be sandwiched in there and hidden away. All right. When we get to the end, we're gonna hide that tail again. So remove your clothespin, put in your last stitch, right up to the 
tip there. I'm gonna go underneath my last stitch there to anchor the thread, the yarn. Go underneath one more time. And then this time underneath and make a knot. So go through the loop and make a knot. Now I'm sticking my needle in between the pieces of wool, one, two, three stitches up. My needle is close to the top here. Poke the needle out, push the wool down while pulling up the needle, still holding this wool down, I'm going to snip. Be very careful you snip the tail and not your stitching, and then straighten it out. Again, the knot is very small and the tail is hidden. Share in your success.